In today's video, we're going to be covering one of the most important topics of programming, and that's the idea of pass by value and pass by reference, what the differences between them are, as well as what each one is in depth. And the reason this is so important to understand is because when you're programming, if you don't have a strong understanding of what pass by value and pass by reference actually means and what they're doing to your code, you're going to run into tons and tons of bugs related to these issues, and they're incredibly hard to track down and debug if you don't understand pass by value and pass by reference. Not only that, almost any time that you go to interview for a job, they're going to ask you some question related to value and reference passing, and if you don't understand it, that's immediately a red flag for them since they know how important and fundamental this skill is. So without any further ado, let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about pass by value and pass by reference and the difference between the two. And to start, we're going to look at a visual example of how pass by value and pass by reference work. And then after that's done, we're going to jump into some code examples so you can see live how these two things interact with each other. So let's jump over to the visual example. And here we are riveting. I know it looks amazing, but as you can see, we just have some really simple code up in this top section, setting two variables, a and b to the values of 10 and high. And down here is going to be how we visually track what all these variables are set to in order to determine if it's passed by value or passed by reference. So as we can know, for example, here, a, the variable is going to have a value of 10 and B is going to have the variable value of high. And these are actually passed by value. So when you're setting a variable to a value such as 10, such as a string, so number, string, Boolean, any of those basic primitive types, you're going to be using pass by value or setting a variable by value. And essentially what that means is that this value column of the variable is going to be set to an actual value, what the variable actually equals, for example, 10 or high, or maybe true or false or 10.2, whatever that value turns out to be. And the way that this works in JavaScript is that you take anything that's on the right hand side of the equal, as we can see this 10 value here. And what it does is it copies the value of this variable into the variable on the right hand side and 10, since it's just a value of 10, it's just going to copy 10 into the value for the variable a, as we can see down here, same thing with high for the string b. Now let's move on a little bit from here. And as you can see, we added another variable, which is c, and we're setting it equal to the variable a. And you've probably done this tons of times while you're programming. So you know, for a fact that c is going to be set to 10, because that's what the value of a is. And as I remember earlier, what we do is we take the value of the variable on the right, in our case, a, which is 10, and we set that to the value of the variable on the left, which is c. So we have c as the variable, and the value of 10. This is all very standard stuff that you're probably used to. And this is what pass by value or setting things by value, just the idea of value is referred to. So now let's go a step further. And if we move on here, we can see that now what we want to do is we want to add one to C and then we want to save that back to C. So essentially we're saying 10 plus one is going to be 11 and we want to save that to C. Well, what actually happens to the value of A and what happens to the value of C? Well, you've probably done this tons of times. So you know for a fact that C is going to be set to 11 and A is going to be set by 10. And the reason this happens is because C is set to a value. It's not a reference. It's actually a value of 10 and A has a value of 10, but these are two different tens. They refer to two different values. So when you actually update C, you're going to be updating it with the value of 11 and you're not going to be touching A because C doesn't reference A. It points to the value 10 and it's updating that value 10 and A points to its own value 10. They're completely distinct from each other. And that's the difference between pass by value and pass by reference, as we're going to see in just a little bit. Now let's move on to this scenario, which is going to be where we're setting C to an array. So what is C's value going to be? You would think that it would have the value of the array one, two, but actually with JavaScript arrays and objects, and essentially anything that's not the primitive type of string number, Boolean, etc., those are going to be passed by reference. So instead you're going to be storing a reference to that object inside the value here. So if we move forward, we can see that the value for C is actually just a memory address. So some place inside the memory of your computer, you're going to have an address, let's say for example, zero one, and it has the value here one, two, which is the actual value of that array. And C just stores a reference to that memory address. So it works very similarly to how the variables worked because you're still storing that value, but you're storing it inside of a memory address and the variable is pointing to that address, if that makes sense. When you call C, you're not actually getting this value here returned, this OX01. You're actually being returned the value of the memory at that location, but the variable itself is only storing a reference to that memory. 
And that's where you may run into problems when you're doing pass by reference and pass by value, as we'll see in just a little bit. If we move forward and we set a new variable d equal to c, what would actually happen? If we follow our previous example, when we created a new variable c and set it to a, we know that c just took the value from a and used that for the value of d. And that's exactly how pass by reference works too. Essentially, this is just like JavaScript, we take the value of the variable on the right, in our case, it's this ox01, and we set that to the value of the variable on the left. And if we move forward, you can see here that we have that reference being set for c and d. But you will notice that there's no more memory being allocated. Both c and d point to the exact same memory address, which means c and d are referencing the exact same piece of memory inside of your code, which is where you're going to run into problems if you don't realize how this works. If we move forward one step further, you can see if we want to add a new variable, we say d.push3, so we're adding the element 3 to our array, it's actually changing both c and d because they both point to the same address. As you can see, our new value for this address is 123 since we added 3 to the end of our array, but now c and d, since they both reference the address over here, they're actually both changed even though we only changed the variable d. And this is where all the time you're going to run into bugs if you don't understand how this works. I know personally when I was learning, and even still now, I run into problems all the time where I forget something's by reference, and I update it, and it somehow updates some other variable that's also referencing the same thing, and I run into bugs because of that. So you really need to make sure you understand in depth how this works. Now let's go one step further and actually set D to a brand new variable. This is going to be the variable 345. And what this does is this 345 variable is someplace in memory somewhere. It hasn't been defined yet, just like this 1, 2 hasn't been. So we set a new address over here, for example, 0, 2, and that's going to have the value of 345. And then C up here is just still going to reference that 0, 1, but now D is referencing 0, 2. And again, that very first rule that I mentioned, where in JavaScript, you take the value of whatever's on the right, in our case, 345, has the memory address of 0, 02. So we take that 0, 02 value and we set it to D. So we're overwriting the value of D. And since we're overwriting the value of D, we're not actually changing the value of C. Only when we change what's at the actual address, that memory, is when we end up changing both of them. But since we're completely overwriting the value stored in D, we're not actually changing anything to do with C. So now if we update D or we update C, it's not going to affect each other. They're completely different values at this point. Now this all seems really confusing at first when you take a look at it, but let's jump into some live examples and be able to understand how these work just a little bit better. So I've essentially recreated our very first example where we had two variables, A and B, both set to primitive values. So these are actually stored by value. And I'm just printing them out down here. We have A and B being printed out. And as you can see, A equals 10 and B equals high. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's add in that variable C. And we're gonna set it here equal to A. And then we're just gonna come down here and print out C just so we can make sure that this is working like I said it would earlier. And as you can see, C is also set to 10. But what happens when we want to update C? We want to add 1 to C, so we can say C is equal to C plus 1. And now if we save, you'll see, like I mentioned earlier, A stays as 10, but C updates to 11. This is how the pass by value is working, just as I explained earlier. Now let's jump in here with an example with arrays. We can come in here and say that this is just going to be the array 1, 2. If I save, you can see C is the array of 1, 2. And if I come down here and I set D, and I set that equal to C, and then I make sure I print out D, just like this, we can see that D is also equal to that array 1, 2. And like I mentioned earlier, D.push of 3, this is going to modify both C and D, because they both point to the exact same value in memory. But if instead I set D equal to the array, for example, we'll just say 3, 4, 5, and now I save that, you can see that C and D are different. And then if, for example, I just said D.push of six, you can see I'm only modifying D, I'm not also modifying C, and this is because they actually point to two different places in memory instead of the same location. And again, this is all what we really talked about earlier in the video. I'm just trying to reiterate and show you that this is how it truly works. And something that's really important by the pass by reference is let's make sure we set here D back to C. And if we wanted to check equality between C and D to see if they're the exact same array, we could just say in here, let's do C, we're going to do triple equals to D, and then we just want to say C triple equals D. So we want to see what that returns, and we also want to check what double equals returns. We're going to remove all this extra code we're not using, and if we save this, you can see that C triple equals D is true, and C double equals D is also true. But what happens 
if we come in here and we set D to the exact same array as C, but we don't actually reference C inside of it, and we click save, you can see that now these are equal to false. And the reason for this is because when we're using the equal sign to compare two different objects, for example, these two arrays, it's actually checking the value, the part that we looked at earlier, that variable value section where we had the memory address being stored. And these are two different memory locations because the value of one, two is, for example, let's just say that this is going to have the memory address of OX01. And down here, we have OX02. Just for example, that's what they're going to be. So when we compare this, we're comparing OX01 to OX02. And of course, this is not correct. But when we set D equal to C, this is actually setting both D and C to that same exact memory address. And if we save again, you'll get the trues over here. And the reason that when we create the second array, even though it's exactly the same array, since we're creating it on a separate line after the equal sign, it's going to have a separate memory address than the array that's up here, even though they have the exact same elements. That's something that will trip up a ton of people, especially when you're trying to compare arrays or objects. So you really need to make sure that you're comparing and knowing if you're comparing by reference or comparing by value. Another case where this is incredibly important and probably the most important case where you're going to have to deal with passing by value and passing by reference is when you're dealing with functions. So let's come down here and we're just going to create a function. We're going to call it add and it's going to take in an array and it's going to take an element. And essentially all this is going to do is it's going to add that element to the array. So we're going to say array dot push element. There we go. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here. And we're going to call that add function with C. So now C is going to have the element three, let's say appended to the end of it. And what we want to do is we want to log out what C is. So we're just going to say C is equal to C. And we're going to do this before and after just like this. So what we're doing is we have our variable one, two, our array, then we're printing out what that equals to adding three to the end of it, and then printing out what it equals again. And if we save, you can see we get one, two as our array and then one, two, three. And you may be wondering, why exactly is that? Why is it that when we pass this array to this function, it's actually having the value appended to it? And that's because this function is taking the value of that variable. In our case, our variable here, as we said earlier, let's just say that it's going to be a variable memory address of one. That is actually what's being passed down here. This is essentially like passing this and the value three. This is what's being passed into our function. So when we're chain push, we're pushing to that exact memory address which is something that you may not actually realize you're doing. You may not realize when you pass an array or an object down to a function and you change it, you actually change the array or object that's outside of the function as well. One thing that can be a little confusing though, is if inside of this function, instead, we just said that array is going to be equal to an empty array with that element inside of it. And now if we do this and save, you can see that our variable is still exactly the same, one, two, and one, two. And that's because we're passing down the memory address of OX01, that's what array is. But when we use the equal sign, like I mentioned, we're actually copying the value from this new array and setting it into our array. So now array here is essentially equal to that memory address OX02, which is the new address of this new element we created. So it no longer references this external array over here, which we were originally modifying with the push command. This is something you don't have to worry about with non pass by reference values though. For example, this element is just a number, the number three, and we know that numbers are passed by value. So it actually just passes the three here. There's no memory address to worry about, no shared context, nothing like that. You just know it's passing three and it doesn't matter what we do to element. For example, if we change this back to how it was before, just like this, what we could do is we could say that the element plus two is going to be set to our element. So let's whoops, copy that out. We can say element is equal to element plus two, and we can put our element inside of here. And if we save this and run it, you'll see that it adds five to the end because it's just element plus two, but we're not actually modifying our element or anything like that outside of the function because it's passed by value. So anything we do to it is not going to affect things outside of it. In conclusion, what you need to know is that primitive values such as numbers, booleans, strings, undefined, null, those are all passed by value and other things such as arrays, objects, and classes those are all passed by reference and can thus be modified. This is why when you set an array to a constant variable, you're still able to do c.push, for example, of three. Let's just get all rid of all this extra code. For example, we can actually change this variable, as you can see over here, because the value that is being constant is that memory reference of OX01, for example. That's what can't change. 
but what we actually store at that memory address can change. And with that, you know everything you need to know about PassPy value and PassPy reference. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.